it y'all it's your boy herb and it's your girl mo and welcome to our soon to be world renowned podcast young black and figuring it out still on season three making it happen i love it captain (laughs) (laughs) what it do (laughs) whatever we tell it hey there you go switch it up on y'all how's it going today Great, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's Great weather. I'm a happy human. (laughs) Somebody like this type of weather. Ain't gonna be me, though. (laughs) I ain't mad at you. That's what's up. Yeah, how's life? Listen, normally how we do at this time, we always ask, what did you figure out? Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into it, though. All right. What did you figure out this week? My communication is terrible. (laughs) That's a good realization. <laughs> That's a good figure out. I feel like that took longer than a week to catch up to. Uh, I mean, yes. This okay. week it, it came to the forefront. However, I, I recognize communication skills are forever evolving. For sure. And to, like, rest on what you know mm. versus what you could improve on right. is a mistake. And so, guilty, guilty as charged, I have recognized more recently. It's like, ooh. Ah, my communication isn't the best you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i i've told you guys this many times i'm a feeler and i express through feelings and people are not all that way most people are more logical yeah factual and my expressions can come off a tacky or very like don't don't give me that <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> it can come off like i am trying to pick a fight it's happened way too much, and I'm like, wait, wait, that's not what I'm trying to say. It's not it. You know, I'm a tearful human. That could come off like, oh, you trying to be a victim? It's, yeah, I am. That's funny. I am a work in progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's okay. It sounds like too that the the that you communicate through the filter of feelings or the mm-hmm. filter of feelings, and so that for people, I think a lot of the world um, probably especially men, the way society does, yeah, mostly y'all. doesn't look through that, you know, lens. Mm-hmm. And so it's, like, not interpreted the way you're meaning to communicate. Right. It's also not generally, like, respected. Like, that's not the way of communication that people want or look toward, you know what I mean? Or yeah. be like, yes, I, I see it from that perspective. Like, usually it's just very, ugh, cringe, please mm. stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that you share that? But this one, this is anecdotal, mm-hmm. right? But do you think you share that trait with um, many other women? Like, like, has society produced that? You know, I don't know. Mm. I don't, that's a really good. Mm. And this is just yeah, a, a anecdotal, right? You're not speaking for all women. I'm but. definitely not speaking for all women. I'm like trying to work through like any kind of conversations I've had with other women or yeah. the things I've seen. You know, possibly, yeah. Okay. Possibly. But for other people's situations, I can logically look at it. I can be objective. So it's like I can see it from more, maybe, maybe more of the male perspective right. when those times happen. But when it's me, I'm like, what's the problem? <laughs> well, I ask that too because I think what you're saying is what I've heard uh, many other women say. Mm-hmm. Like it's if you're communicating through like a lens that is um, emotionally driven, it's mm-hmm. oftentimes it's dismissed. Yes. Um, Which is very hurtful, by the way, guys. Please recognize yeah. that. Mm-hmm. That is then transferred over, I think, into spaces like the business spaces. People don't, because, again, those are set up by men. Yes. And so, like, those other type of skills or skill sets, like emotions, you mm-hmm. know, aren't valued in the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yes, I think, so with that, it kind of, back to what you were saying, what you figured out, it creates a, um, a barrier, yeah. a difficulty mm-hmm. with communication. Yeah, mm. and leads into, like, almost a fight. And I do not enjoy fighting. Like, I don't want to fight. That's not a mm. motive ever. But I recognize, oh, I have to be clear and say, can we please talk about this? Yep. It is bothering me or it's, you know, it's affecting me in okay. some way. And, like, be letting them know, like, this, I'm not just whining. <laughs> like, you take it like it's whining. It's like, I'm not whining. This, I'm sad. This has hurt me. And I don't always know how to express that in a way that's clear mm-hmm. where we, like, can discuss it versus – me just saying it and you take it as a complaint and then all of a sudden you dismiss me and then it's the cycle that continues, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I hear that. Especially as somebody who's more logical. Like, I don't, like, my emotions are uh, there, but I'm not, like, I don't lean into that heavy. Nor do I want to get to a point where I'm heavily, like, I don't want to tip the scale. I want to get to the middle. Yeah. But I don't want to be more on the emotional side. Balance. Um, yes, I, well, yes. no, I don't even want to get to the middle. I actually like being more logical. I think you kind of need people all across the spectrum. And I don't mind being one of those people who, like, Closer to the middle, but more leaning towards the logical side. You know, I actually don't mind that. If this is the spectrum, where are you? 
Uh, where's the middle? The microphone? Yeah. <laughs> so y'all can't see us, but it's a, imagine the middle. To the left is Logic. I'm probably... That was, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm probably <laughs> in the middle of like between the middle and the complete left. I'm in the middle of that. Okay. <laughs> you feel me? So between Logic and the middle of between Logic and... Yeah, between Logic and Balance, I'm, yeah, between, yeah. I'm in the middle between Logic and Balance, which, you know, I used to be all the way over. Like, there's no room for feelings. You, you know? know me then. Where am I? I'm clearly closer to the right. Uh, you tell me what you think. I told you what I think about myself. You know, I think I I don't think I'm s- stable in that sense. I, okay. I think I fluidly move between yeah. balance and yeah. and emotion. And then there are times when I'm over here by logic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I kind of dance. I just dance the line. That's okay. what I'll be doing. All right. I for that. And let me just give a quick lesson. For all the people with partners out there who try to get you into trap questions like that, like, what do you think? That's what you do. <laughs> you tell me what you think about yourself. Because <laughs> you're not about to walk yourself or walk me into something. So, yes. Okay. Bet. The modeling was so unnecessary. <laughs> okay, let me go out here. Lesson. Jim. Okay. He's right. He, if anyone thinks this is just for the podcast, this man does this to me on a regular basis. You I said- have yet to give up. <laughs> I've tried. You tell me your thoughts about you. You about to catch me. Do you agree of me dancing the line though? Yeah, I think I think you exist more on this side of the dance, the which right is closer side. to emotion yes. for sure. Yes. Um, so I, I at least will say that. I think okay. you would agree with that. For yes, sure. I do agree. I think I live like on the right. Yeah, but I will during the day dance yeah. all through. You work and practice and help others in that space. In the yeah. left. Yeah, 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 for sure. Which is good <laughs> for those who can't see us. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> for your role, like being a therapist, that's important. Like if you always maneuver through emotions right then it would be hard for you to objectively help people get to where they need true, to be true you know? and i have seen that in the workplace and i don't know how people make it gotcha. through the day just in that emotional space it yeah. can be so taxing yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and draining for a person mm-hmm. so yeah i think it's it's good to find that balance and it's okay to you know dance the line completely it's fine. yeah 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 yeah. I heard that. <laughs> yeah for sure okay it's good yeah now for you what did man, you figure what out i figure out man i f- I think I figured out that um, this is more of a, so we always tend to go back to ourselves about what we figured out. I figured this is about like just things in general. So mm-hmm. what I figured out is I think people uh, are less apt to actually want to, to come to a discussion or a bait or debate, discussion, debate, argument, whatever it is, um, with the intent of coming to a resolution that mm-hmm. may be outside of what they expected the outcome to be. Like people come in with here is what I'm looking for. And regardless of what happens, like if I don't achieve that, then it's a loss. Not like we're coming in here and the goal is to find the best resolution mm-hmm. regardless. Mm-hmm. It's like, here is actually what I want to get out of this. Right. And I'm going to fight until I either have to concede or win or win. Even if the other point is more valid. Right. Right. It does not matter. It's really be, I now lost because I did not come in there saying, all right, the goal is let's get to the best outcome. Right. For and all so, parties. It's yeah. Like- and so I'm starting to realize because I think for me, um, and this isn't like any type of self, like uh, uh, I'm not like doing this with any vanity. I'm saying that I, I do come in there a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, let's figure this out. Like, let's have a discussion. And, oh, yeah, if that makes more sense. Hmm, bet. Let's do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I hear that. I see that. Um, not all the time, though, right? I am, I do have pride and I am strong willed. So I'm not going to say all the time, but I've noticed I intentionally do that often, more often than I've seen. Yeah. And um, yeah, that that is, yeah, that was a aha moment. And I think that is potentially a destructive quality of our society. Like that, because mm. that transcends mm-hmm. workplace discussions. That transcends like sports. That transcends news media. That transcends politics. Family dynamics. Relationships. Yeah. Like that transcends. And so the more and more that becomes accepted mm-hmm. and expected for it to be that way, the less and less we have room to like grow, develop, compromise, you know, all those things. True. I mean, it's a personal agenda, and it's very often that people are very much an I type of society. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very rare that it's a we. Yeah. Like, no one really thinks in a we type of thing, unless it's a team. And even that is hard. Like, coaches mm-hmm. have a hard job trying to corral a bunch of individuals into mm-hmm. a team mindset, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But that makes sense. You are generally more of a collaborative type of human, and you don't ever try to be as dictatory as you could be. But there are plenty of people who <laughs> that's not their thing. They don't really care what you think. Mm-hmm. They don't. They want you to do what they need you to do for their personal mm-hmm. growth or success or whatever makes them look the best. And I find that the most damaging. You're right, and like things you see, corporations, businesses, whatever. Yeah, or in their mind, like it, it might even be about them. It's like it might be, hey. Here's what I think you need to do, mm-hmm. like, for you to be successful, right? Like, I think this is what it is. And you might come with a logical point, logical mm-hmm. thoughts. Like, actually, no. If I do this, it's better for me. And because I didn't think about it, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, no, this is what I said. You know, and I just, like, why, what are we doing? That's <laughs> it's kind of like the, I've been in spaces, and I'm thinking, why, why is, it's been to the point where, like, there's no way you can argue against this point. We just talked about one on Facebook. Yeah, we did. Like, there is no way that this is wrong. What in the world are you arguing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, if you're arguing facts, <laughs> proven facts, Yeah. why even bother engaging? What, what are we doing? It doesn't I, make I, sense. Yeah. So that, I found it out. Yeah. And it's baffling. That's real. Right? So, mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, with that being said, though, I am on a crash course journey to make sure that i model it differently encourage other people to do it differently because i would not give up on this being the way to do things like i'm not going to concede and say what is it's going to be no 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 <laughs> no 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 we are going to influence a group of people who will influence others who will influence others True. and it will this would not be the way i support that Mm-mm. yeah because you do get a lot of combative like energy at that point yeah, yeah. uh-uh that's what that's so mm-hmm. yeah that's what i'm on well done gracias <laughs> Your Spanish. <laughs> My Spanish is more being. I've been practicing. Ooh. And yeah. I like that there's this Detroit accent that comes out with the Spanish. You know what I mean? It's like so far from the language mm-hmm. accuracy, but like the diction. <laughs> yeah, but you say the words. You, you got it. Yeah. I support you. The vocabulary getting there. Mm-hmm. I've been using Duolingo. They should sponsor us for that. Oh but yeah. Man, <laughs> listen, you ready for this topic? Yeah. Because it's like, it's time. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, y'all. This. Um, this will be figured out. So now let's figure out more things because <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been baffled by this too. So uh, not too long ago, we had a conversation similar, and this was about truth, right? So today we're going to talk about more truth. Um, today's episode is entitled "No Thanks for Giving" uh-huh. or something like that. <laughs> 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 by the time you hear, it might be different. Um, yeah, you know. Um, and the thought behind that is, and the reason why we thought about this is as we, you know, come up in the holiday season, mm-hmm. um, Thanksgiving is something that's always been, uh, at least in my family, celebrated. Uh, and we get together, we eat, mm-hmm. this big feast, this, this big meal. Yeah. People travel from out the way, you get time off school, and we celebrate that, right? Yeah. Um, we learned about Thanksgiving in school, mm-hmm. all of those things. And uh, come to find out, you know, Similar to how we talked about Columbus Day, there is a deep, dark, different story. A lot of myths. Yeah, yeah. a lot of mythi- mythological. Mythical? Mythical. Yes, things going on. So it's like, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about that. We want to be get a truth. And mm-hmm. people really might be wondering, why are... That's, that's <laughs> I, really, I got triggered so quick. I was like, we're ending. Is this the end? <laughs> you talking about the actual topic. <laughs> people might be wondering, um, why we keep shining and shedding light on these things like history on these things and right because it might be uncomfortable right right so why do you think that's important first though that we are shining light on things truth um i think being you know ignorance is bliss type of mindset is damaging yeah. to a lot of people i think it can be hurtful i think sometimes we speak so much out of ignorance and we don't even recognize mm-hmm. how much like th- things are getting way more diverse and how much we can say things that can harm or like cause problems in certain places. I think it's so important to understand like the past because history will forever repeat itself. I don't Mm -hmm. know how that's never been like more pushed, but the understanding that history will repeat itself because that's just what it does. You can look at it in any fashion. Like if you look at it through fashion, like styles always come back, you know what I mean? So I think it's so important to not make those same mistakes Mm -hmm. and just the way humans typically can get Mm-hmm. It can get, you know, <laughs> tragic. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And 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 then I also believe that we have um in general 
when it comes to history, something we've allowed to happen is people to speak out or kind of entrench in their beliefs without mm. having all of the facts. Mm. So some of the push that we get in like when we bring up Columbus Day, mm-hmm. right? Or when people are like, hey, I'm um I appreciate living in America, but right, I understand like this is a place that is rooted in tragedy mm-hmm. and I have grievances and, and, and I have strife with America. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we haven't done right, we haven't been honest. And that's because the reason why people are upset with people who say those things mm-hmm. is because they don't have the full truth. Like they've been taught, uh, they've been miseducated. Yeah. Right. On the facts. Right. And it's like, if folks were brought up on all of the facts, right. the true facts about what's been happening here in our society and really across the globe mm-hmm. and then can make decisions from there, we can get to a better place. But a lot of, I think people's, um, hatred or decisions or tribes or clans or things that they dive into is really based on false information. Yes. Or not the whole information. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, like yeah. omitted information. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah. you feel like that. Because you thought everything was rosy and peachy and mm-hmm. great. But, like, no, that's not true. And so if we present the truth, right, it at least give people the opportunity to make decisions based on truth. Now, if you – because it's different. It's right. different than saying, like, think about Columbus. If you thought he came and discovered America and you really believe that, of course you're going to celebrate him. But it's different when you now know right. that he came and actually enslaved and killed thousands of people. Right. If you still choose to celebrate, you're choosing to vouch for those actions, mm-hmm. which is harder for a lot of people to do. Or you now have to bear your true character. Right, right. You know, right. so I think that is why we need to share truth. Yeah. You know? Fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with that, what's the truth of Thanksgiving? What were you taught? What were, what were the, so before we get to the truth of it, <laughs> what things were you taught? So I remember, I don't know why elementary school always sticks out. Like, don't ask me questions about middle and high school as much, but yeah. elementary school. I the remember. Good old days. <laughs> easy <laughs> the recess. School, you know? yeah. But I remember them um, sharing how the pilgrims came. Yeah. And the they called them Indians at the time. The Indians met them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, like, showed them how to live on the land and fed them, you know, like, clothed them mm. and took care of them. And then, you know, they, not that they disappeared, but they, like, went over to their own space, like the reservation, and gave up this large, vast amount of land yeah. to the pilgrims so that they can thrive and grow. Mm-hmm. I was like, aw. You know, that's, <laughs> that's how it was thought to be as a child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They landed Yes. What did you learn? Like anything different? I, no, from that? no, it's the same. Like yeah. you, know, you put only thing is like they put up on the, the Mayflower to Plymouth Rock mm-hmm. and hopped out, and it was like, yo, like it's saying like the indigenous folks or the Indians at the time, like yo, what's good? Welcome. Yes, yes. <laughs> Come in. Hey, you hungry? Let's eat. Bet this is how you do this. This is how you do that. This is how we farm. Open arms. We've been living here for twelve thousand years, but we about to be out, so you can have the space. Yeah. That was what we pretty much. I'm sitting there like, dang. People are generous. <laughs> I'm like, dang. How nice. And of course, we learned about them sitting and eating together. Yeah. Sharing food. Yes. Just like, it's yes. beautiful. This Pass the mashed potatoes. Pretty. All of that. Like, yes. blended family scenario. Yeah. yeah. We was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. I was like, this is so sweet. Yeah. But I do remember, even as a kid, thinking like, they tripping. Why did you, that's a lot to give up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, they weren't tripping because that's not what actually happened. <laughs> but the way it was celebrated, though, before we get to the true story, yeah. like Thanksgiving, again, you get time off, you mm-hmm. learn about that. But then even in some places, we weren't there. Uh, we didn't do this in my place and culture. But some people would like get dressed up like with the hat. You remember the big black hats yes. that they wear? The and pilgrim hats, right? The pilgrim hats yes. and the whole outfits. And then even I remember oh, we might have did this. Shane, <laughs> Shane was elementary. Shame on y'all. We might have did a play. We might have did a play. About um, Thanksgiving and dress like how people dress up, like as honestly, like indigenous folks and other people dress up. We might have done that. Wow, I have Dang. a vague memory. That, so yes. you were in the play or you watched the play? I, I don't remember. Dang. So because you, say you participate, no. because I don't remember, I'm gonna say I did not participate. <laughs> and just let that melt in the history, but. I don't remember a play. I do remember like making the turkeys yeah. and like maybe making the hats. Like there was yeah. always an activity to mm-hmm. make or do something mm-hmm. for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And I remember enjoying yeah. not going to school. Yeah. Like that was really. 
That was the thing. Because my family was never very big on holidays in general. So, like, I think once in a blue, my mom maybe made, like, a turkey and thing. But for the most part, like, we didn't really gather as a family or do anything special. I was just happy to be home from school. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Quick question. So, in um, Barbados, like, Bayesian roots, is there, I'm trying to think. I know Thanksgiving is heavy, a North American thing. Um, Is that this, how did they celebrate Thanksgiving? Did they celebrate? Like, do you know? That's not a holiday, like in other parts of the mm. the world. This yeah, is like really more of a North national thing. It's a, it's yeah, yeah. And in Canada, it's like North America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Canada's is a different day. It's different. Yeah, for sure. So like, nah, that's not a thing. So like, it wasn't a big deal for my family. Yeah, we were really just chilling. I, that's why I, I yeah. wonder if that influence also influenced like the maybe not as much focus on. That I, I mean, maybe, but my dad is also a very like he he loves history and he's an honest human. Oh yeah, okay. And is always like a. You celebrating what? <laughs> he, that's always his shtick. He don't call it like misgiving. Yeah. Like he calling it Thanksgiving because yeah. he's like, you know, there's a lie, right? Like yeah. he's that I appreciate that. No, you need that. Though. Oh yeah, he kept me really aware yeah. at a young age, yeah. and because I, I asked a lot of questions, I was yeah. a very inquisitive child, and he so, would always be like, "Money, what? What did he teach you? Let me tell you." <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And I love the accent, the Bayesian accent. <laughs> but yo, it's funny you say that because even when we talked about Columbus a little while back, you were like, uh, "He's like, discover what." <laughs> Your pops are like to discover, huh? What he, happened? he is not. He does not like injustice. He doesn't like mm. that people will take credit for things okay, that they never like did. He's always like, there were people here. Yeah. What are they teaching you? He was never big on the American like education system. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So people wonder like, yo, what's the? Okay, let's break it down to like the like history. what's the actual truth? Yeah, the actual truth, and then start with the myth. Like this is what people tell you. It's what you learn in school. So let me mm-hmm. read this to you because we wrote some stuff down. Um, the myth. <laughs> Is that the friendly Indians? The legend, like the yes, <laughs> unified, uh, unidentified tribe, right? It was an unidentified tribe. They was like, because you know, it's not just like Indians make. Like you just say Indians, and not all people are one. It's like you right. know, there are different tribes, and the same way we have cultures and races and all that. Right. It was a similar concept. Okay? And then the term Indians alone, but let's. Like, it's a problem because you know, brother thought he landed in India, but that's a different. That's a different episode. You can right. go back and watch that one. Mm-hmm. So, um, welcome the pilgrims to America after they arrived on the Mayflower in mm-hmm. the early 1600s, well after Christopher Columbus got here in the 1400s. Mm-hmm. Teach them how to live in this new land. They sit down at dinner with them and then disappear, like we talked about. They hand off America to white folks so they can create this great nation dedicated to life, liberty. In the pursuit of happiness and Christianity, we can't forget that had a right. large part in this at the time. Right. Um, that's the story. It's about really native folks conceding to like colonialism, mm-hmm. right at the time. Almost like uh, imagine like bowing down and giving gifts and backing up, yeah, and disappearing into like the forest and ne- never to be seen again. Yeah. Some that's key things like the- to also think about is like the way that story is told is that it's also bloodless. Mm-hmm. Right, like there was no bloodshed in the way they tell the story. Oftentimes, and in many ways, it was an extension of this idea. It's called manifest destiny, mm-hmm. which is pretty much like in the 19th centuries or 1800s, mm-hmm. people were like, "Yo, uh, the expansion, the Western expansion in America was destined by God. Like mm-hmm. we were destined to expand and pillage and kill and then yes. conquer the land." What's the idea of manifest destiny in the yeah. 19th century? I actually remember learning that in middle school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, middle school. You feel me? <laughs> Shout out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So. And, uh, I mean, unfortunately, that myth is still so taught, not oh, even sure. just in schools, but, like, yeah. a, a, a Thanksgiving ago, mm-hmm. I went to a dinner, and mm-hmm. it was it was, um, it was was a great family mm-hmm. who I have known for forever. They are a white family, you know, mm-hmm. very kind humans, great food. But the the Thanksgiving dinner started off with what was taught in church that like week. And it was heavily pushed in this myth of we wouldn't be here, us pilgrims. Like the pilgrims were saved by the Indians and they sheltered them. Yeah. Fed them. Yeah. And you know, you know, the pilgrims brought like fifty percent or not fifty percent, they like died off fifty percent because of the diseases they came from like came with from Europe. And if not for the Indians, we'd have completely died out. Oh my gosh, thank you. And then like Thanksgiving. Like that was yeah. that's how the dinner started. Yeah. And like we had a little thing of like the corn that they ate, like a little and I was like, <laughs> it was me and my sister. And we were very aware that this is not right. Yeah. But again, as the only, we weren't about to say anything. It was just like, huh, so this 
this foolishness is still being taught. Yeah. No one realizes that this is so far from what actually happened. Yeah. Wait, when was this? <sighs> this was, you know, a few Thanksgivings ago. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, recent, yeah. guys. Okay. It was not that nah, far. Nah, this wasn't that long ago. Yeah. People, like, really thought that. Like, yo, yeah, yeah. This was go- yeah, so people yes, still believe that. I was in my that. 30s, yes. Yeah, and they're like, yo, we got to bleep that out. So I don't <laughs> know how old you are. But, yeah, um, I actually, now that you say that, it's funny because you think about that telling of history, which when you think about this, this, uh, this, I didn't even think about this before. Like, this is giving me chills. Mm. That telling of history and the way that went for white people, because mm-hmm. that's a very Eurocentric view. And then you think about if you're in there learning this as a black student and what you learn about your arrival in America mm-hmm. and how that then can shape your mind frame and determine how you value yourself and your culture. Yes. Right. Like that's very different. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, because I think it's sometimes as a kid, real young, not having all the full understanding of how things worked, I kind of conflated my histories like, you know, okay, well, I'm American. Mm-hmm. So I must have also had to, this also had to be a part of my history mm-hmm. with the pilgrims. But then wait, though, I also remember them saying that black folks can be here as slaves. Yes. Something's not right. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, wait. And so my little brain trying to put that together, it's like, man, that right there, like that in itself is mm-hmm. mental anguish. Like we are really creating a, a their struggle, mm-hmm. especially for black and brown kids who are trying to like understand their place in this society mm-hmm. when we teach this false history, right? Mm-hmm. The multiple false histories. So yeah. Yeah. Man. That was and People I was like, get, in church? This, yeah. this is just recently taught in church. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, that was painful. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was so eye opening for me. Yeah, we I got was like, I've never went to a church and they shared anything close to this myth, but apparently yeah. it happens. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? So some of the issues with that is like, when you do it, when you do it that way, it kind of starts. It makes it seem like the history of the world or like the history of America. St- starts there mm-hmm. like the history of indigenous people starts there it's right. like no they've been there for t- up to twelve thousand years yes before this yes but it kind of like starts there and then and then it also gives like this pass for th- things that we've done like the fact that we've the fact that they have wiped out uh uh had to do that mm-hmm. wiped out an entire like culture race of people Push them to reservations. Mm-hmm. Like, we've made it okay by what you described your story was, which is, oh, yeah, they gave us this land and dipped off. Right. And like we justify that right. to people. And then mm-hmm. you grow up not really questioning. Mm-hmm. That's the first issue. And then it also suggests, like, the first contact with people was then because they had already been in contact with Europeans before the Mayflower pulled up. and hit them. That was never taught. It's like, they had already been there. It's like, what do, people, they had already been trading, and yep. like, this had already been happening. Yeah. For a hundred years plus yeah, at that point. Natives could speak English yeah. at that point. Like they, they have done this enough times over the years. That they learned the language. Yeah. So hence, this wasn't like <laughs> hence like yeah, welcome. We've we've known you for welcome here. Wow. So what's the true story? All right. You ready for this? So, mm-hmm. uh this is based on some multiple places of literature. If there's a place to put sources, <laughs> we would do that. But we're just gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> so um Yes. So this actually, this interaction with the the pilgrims was based on a particular tribe called the <sighs> Wampanoags. There you go. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you're like, come on, get it right. Go yeah, because I couldn't remember. Okay. Well, I think it was Wampanoags. And if I ain't get it right, Wampanoag. That's what it was. Wampanoag. Sure? Yes. Yes. Either way it go. Yes. Yeah. We're going to get there. So regardless. Um, so it's not just all indigenous people, which mm-hmm. we got to break that myth. Um, landed in Plymouth in, the six, in 1620, the, the chief of that tribe during that time actually had been in contact with multiple different Europeans and was in, engaged in a really tense time with their rivals, right, which was a different tribe not too far away. And that was really 50 years that um, this kind of tribal war was going on, right, mm-hmm. or tensions, mm-hmm. okay? So when he got there in the 1620s, um, they said, hey, let's make an alliance because we don't want to be, we don't want to have beef with the Europeans who are here. And we also want to help strengthen ourselves, like through trade, right. to be able to handle right. and deal because there was some tribal warfare going on, right? right? So, and that alliance lasted for about 50 years where they had trade and they actually showed, they showed Europeans things throughout the last 50 years. But it still was tense. It wasn't like, hey, this is a friendly meeting. This is about necessity, it's right? Like business, really. Yeah, the enemy of the 
enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. But right. we actually like it's not. It was not. Was civil. Those, those type of business transactions are usually pretty cold. Yeah. And it's like no, we're here for a purpose. And that's yes, like, yes, we do. What we have to do mm-hmm. right now. With America is tense with China. We still do trade. Yeah. Is right. You pick up something right now. I tell you what it's made at. Right. <laughs> You're right. Sorry, just being honest. You're right. Okay. So that was that type of thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so after a while, the tensions united into a war between again the Wampanoags and the other tribe. Um, it was known as the King Philip's War, right, mm-hmm. or one of the Great Wars. Um, that conflict actually devastated the Wampanoags. Right, uh, so much so that now the power difference shifted in favor of the Europeans. Mm-hmm. During that power difference, because they were at war, right? You're losing people, resources during that vulnerable space. And remember, the Europeans and the Wampanoags have been had this alliance for 50 years now. Right, right. That's a long alliance. That's some loyalty built in. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, once the power shifted because of the war, they're losing people and resources. Mm-hmm. The Europeans capitalized. Right. And decided to take over. Right. And now the again, resources depleted, losing people, disease had also been widespread, which is heavily brought by Europeans at that time. Mm-hmm. And so they did exactly what we thought about. Um the pilgrims went ahead and used that time to actually conquer. Yeah. Right. So that is the actual true story. Mm-hmm. The pilgrims pillaged, right? And killed and murdered and well really waited their time until it was the right time to do so. Right. So the in the current in native history, the landing or the um, arrival of the pilgrims is actually seen as a day of mourning, mm. not a day of celebration, mm-hmm. which tells you all you need to know right. as far as what actually happened. Right. So that's the true story. It feels so backstabby. <laughs> well, you know, we, uh, do, I'm do, just do saying, you expect less? <laughs> or do you, do I'm you just saying, more? you know, now if you're like, you know, I mean, how do you make this? Like, if you get jumped by a, your buddy, mm-hmm. you expect your like someone's someone's fighting you. You expect your homie over there, like we've been loyal for a minute. You got my back, and they take the time to be like, nah, let me stomp on you too. It's like, mm-hmm. wait, wait. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought I had backup. It's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, and 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 I think from what I remember at that time, they didn't have a um, the alliance was more of we provide. It's kind of like what's happening right now, right, with um, Ukraine and Russia. And mm-hmm. Here's what I mean: um, the NATO, right, or let's just say we just use America. We're not actually at war with Russia, mm-hmm. but we're providing arms and resources to support it. So we're like we're not actually in the middle of this, but you know we're gonna help support Ukraine. It. Yeah, yeah. So that's what was going on, and so. That's what happened. And so it would be like us saying, huh, Ukraine struggling. This is not a time to claim that land is our own. Right, right. Let's jump in there and do that. Which I think many, if they heard that, would say, no, I'm appalled. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yes, now reference that to this. In the right. So that's what's going thing. on that. Yes, so, yes, yeah, yes. so people are probably thinking, well, how did we get from that to this? And where did this feast come from? We're going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So this is how this actually happened, right? So uh, we're going to read this story. We actually got this um, from a credible source. Great story, though, right? Because I w- wanted to know that myself. Why mm-hmm. do we eat like this? Mm-hmm. Even though that's the one part of it. I'm like, oh, we can keep that part. Let's keep the food. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep the food. Let's get rid of the history. Let's have it a thankful day. Let's call it thankful day. we just thankful for family and friends and good food. Right. But let's get rid of all that other stuff. Yeah, that's exactly so, the thing. <laughs> So here's the feast story. For a long time, uh, English people had already been celebrating the idea of Thanksgiving, right? But it just didn't involve a feast. Um, it involved fasting, ironically, <laughs> and praying to God, right? In 1769, a group of uh, pilgrim descendants who lived in Plymouth felt like their authority in the region was slipping away to kind of like the new English colony. So as like the colonies continue, like America was being reborn uh-huh. or being born in that way, um, as we know it today. They felt like kind of like the English, the New England theme was losing steam, right? They were mm-hmm. losing authority and cultural relevance. Um, and so what they did was, hey, we want to boost this and boost tourism for folks to come and appreciate what we've done. So they started to plant the seeds that pilgrims were the fathers of America. Mm-hmm. So because they saw this happening, they said, you know what? We need to create this narrative. This is years after Plymouth Rock, right? Right. So um, what really made it turn into feast was that there was a story in a publication newspaper at the time, which newspaper is the equivalent to like social media right yeah, now. Yeah, it is. Then, right? It's like Instagram. <laughs> um, you know, 
it on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah more yeah. TikTok now. Uh, published by the Reverend Alexander Young, right? And in that, what was included in that note was, this was the first Thanksgiving, the great festival of New England, when the pilgrims arrived on the Mayflower. So that picked up steam. It went viral at the time. And people was like, you know what? That is what happened. They did have this feast. Mm -hmm. We need to recreate that. And thus, the feast behind Thanksgiving was born. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there were meals over 50 years span between the indigenous folks and the pilgrims. Yes, they did teach them ways because that was a business transaction. They were right, involved in right. trade. Um, but actually... For years, for years during this time, it wasn't the first time they met. They had already been involved with Europeans. They had been enslaving people and at war with some tribes, uh -huh. right, of indigenous folks. So this was not the first time. But we're told it was, though. We're told there was no bloodshed. Uh -huh. We're told it was actually um, a choice. Right. Take this land. Not what we just heard today. Huh. Yeah. How do you think people will receive that truth? I think those who are in a space where they want honesty and truth mm -hmm. and are in a learning, like I need to understand my heritage and the culture that we live in are going to receive it just fine and be like, Oh, I didn't know that or do more research themselves, which will be great. I think those who are closed off to any form of truth aren't listening anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we, so what's the danger of like, if we keep this narrative up, if we keep believing myths, yeah, this um, one in particular and all of it. Like, what's the danger here? I think, like... What's going to happen to us? Like we said earlier, like, history will repeat itself. And, mm -hmm. like, we're already in different types of things happening. And people, some people will stay ignorant to, like, what's happening in the wars or in the, like, tensions going on with different countries. Yeah. And, like, sometimes, unfortunately, the, like, pride of this nation will have you believe we're just the greatest and nothing we do is ever wrong. Right. Which can be very problematic yeah. if you are traveling anywhere or if things happen, you, like, look to blame others rather than looking within. It's like, sometimes we don't make the best choices. Yeah. A country is still just a country run by people. Like, people yeah. do not make the best choices right. all the time. Right. And sometimes we have to live with that and consequences come from that. Mm. I think if we choose to just bury our heads in the sand, history will repeat itself and it won't be in our favor. We're yeah. better off like being honest with ourselves, mm -hmm. recognizing the mistakes we've made, and trying to rectify them as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I would almost think this too. Mm -hmm. People should look to why you have your Thanksgiving dinners, right? Yeah. While you talk to folks as you are having conversations, speak truth. Yeah. Tell truth. The truth is okay. Mm -hmm. The truth will set you I knew free. I knew going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Or put you in prison, depending on you know what you're telling the truth about. <sighs> but we should be, hey, honestly though, as a country, like we said last time in the last Columbus joint, um, you can't heal what you never reveal, mm. right? So we can't get there as a nation if we don't um, be honest, yeah. right? Which has not been the custom. No, it's very unfortunate. Yes. And then, like, just unsettling. It's like, come on, y'all. Yeah. We don't need to pretend. And people might be listening right now, thinking, like, what in the world are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we might be right. We ain't, but we might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we just young, black, black and, and figured it out. out.